Welcome to the Crafted Closet. I'm Julie, and in today's tutorial, we'll be making the BFT or Violet Field Threads Savannah dress in size 910. The coral fabric is from Joann's, and the citrus fabric is QT Fabrics, and I bought it at fabric.com. I will try to put a link to both of these in the description if I can find one. Um, the pin tucks that I put on the bib are shown in a previous tutorial, so go check that out. And if you're interested in purchasing this dress, I have it at my shop at wyattandpearl.com. I'll put links to all this information down in the description below, and let's get started. I'm going to start by French seaming the strap ruffle and the bib ruffle together. You want to make sure that the curve of the strap ruffle lines up with the curve of the bib ruffle and you want the straight sides together and then we're going to line up these edges and so at a quarter of an inch Finger press this open with my thumbs. Now we're going to sew this seam at a quarter of an inch. Back stitch to lock in the stitches. these French seams toward the back of the dress. So those are the two individual pieces versus the one long center piece. And then we're going to, while we're here at the sewing machine, we're going to fold in about 3 sixteenths of an inch, eighth of an inch. I think the pattern tells you to do a quarter of an inch, but I like a slightly smaller little rolled hem here. So go all the way along the piece, folding in, and then come back and fold over one more time. I should also mention on the pattern, there's kind of a little point here. I've rounded that off because I think you get a smoother finish with it being rounded versus having a point there. Because this is on a curve, you can, it kind of acts like a bias. You can get that to lay smooth, especially once we sew it in place. So I will do that for the whole length of the ruffle and meet you at the sewing machine. Now that this has been pressed, we're going to sew it in place. I'm lining up the edge of my fabric with the edge of my presser foot so that's going to give me an eighth inch seam this is a narrow hem foot or I think Juki actually calls it a hinged zipper foot doesn't get as close to zippers as I would want but I do like it for kind of almost all my sewing other than zippers so 
So the whole time I'm just watching to make sure that my fabric stays lined up with the right edge of this foot. Just go slowly around the curve. Coming up to this French seam, it's going to be a little um, bulky. Let me get that little piece of fabric stuck in there. Okay, it's going to be a little bulky. Just go over it slowly. like from the back and then on the front just have a nice narrow hem. Now we're going to sew two rows of gathering stitches. So I'm going to do one at about three sixteenths of an inch. So my foot's an eighth. This is a quarter. I'm going in between. It's also five millimeters. switch my stitch length to a about a three and a half. tails that you can pull and then I'll sew another row of gathering stitches at one centimeter ruffle hemmed and the gathering stitches sewn, I'm going to find the center point of the ruffle and cut a little snip there. Actually, if you make a little triangle, it's easier to see when, once you have everything gathered, just in case. Um, if there's just a little slit, it can kind of be hard to see, especially if this unravels any while you're um, gathering. And then I'm also going to find the quarter point. So I'll take that midpoint and come back to this shoulder seam. Little clip. Do the same thing on the other side. And then you have to gather up the back ruffles to half their original um, length. So they are about 14 inches. So they'll end up being seven inches when they're finished. I'm gonna find the uh, the 
bobbin thread from the gathering stitches. Make sure I'm in frame. Got the bo bobbin thread from the gathering stitches and I'm just going to start pulling the fabric along those bobbin threads. Right now I'm just trying to get it close to the length that I'm going to need and when I, when I pin it onto the bib and onto the straps then I'll get it exactly where it needs to be. I do about half from one side and then I go to the other end, find the bobbin threads and do the same. So I will get this gathered and then we'll attach it to the bib. Now I'm going to mark the center and quarter points on this little bib front to find kind of the quarter point. I'm going to line, actually, so you leave half an inch um, unsewn when you attach the ruffle. So we'll go half an inch and then I'm just kind of lining the fabric up along itself because it's got a curve and finding where the halfway point between the end and the center are. I'll do the same on this side. And this just gives me a good idea of how I need to space the ruffle out so that I get even gathers along the entire bib. Now I have my ruffle that we've already gathered and I'm going to start pinning it in place. So I'm lining up the center points and I've marked the my notches on the ruffle just so I can find them easier for the purposes of doing the video. If I was just doing this normally, I would just line up my the notches and not have them pre-marked. We're going to line up the quarter points. Make sure when you're pinning this in that you have the wrong side of the ruffle facing up. Evenly spread your gathers between your pins and add a few more pins in to hold everything in place. Then we'll come up to the shoulder where the shoulder seam will be and line up the shoulder seam on the ruffle half inch from the edge of the bib piece. And then evenly spread ruffle pieces. them in place 
and then we'll do I will do the other half off camera and meet you at the sewing machine. We've got the ruffle all pinned in place and now we're going to sew it into place. Turn it around so I've got my seam allowance to the correct side. I'm starting half an inch from the edge of the um, bib piece. And then as I go, I'm straightening and making sure my ruffles are even. Lift up my presser foot and kind of between each um, pin, I'll make sure that everything's nice and straight and even. I'm making sure my tucks are going the right direction underneath the ruffle as I go. So now I've ironed the ruffle away from the bib piece and now we're going to pin it and top stitch it 
to the um, main bodice. I'm going to start by pinning it to the at the neckline. center so I can see my center crease on both the bib and the main bodice. So I'll line those up and pin. And you just want to make sure that this is laying completely flat and is completely opened up that you're not catching any fabric in there that isn't supposed to be. So I'll pin this all the way around and then we'll top stitch it. Got everything pinned in place now. And so I'm going to line up the edge of my presser foot with the edge of the bib. And then I'm just gonna sew around and top stitch the bib to the main fabric. in place. Now I'm going to attach the bodice lining at the neckline. So I'm going to pop a few pins in here. Make sure that the bib, the main bodice fabric, and the lining all line up. Sew this with a half inch seam allowance. Back stitch to lock in my stitches.
I'm going to trim this with pinking shears. And the pinking shears might have a little trouble where the pin tucks are. You may have to adjust. You can also, if you don't have pinking shears, just cut little notches out all along the way. I'm going to iron the neckline open. I kind of go around to start. Just iron that seam open. And flip the whole thing over. And iron it down. You want to make sure that the lining doesn't stick up past the main bodice pieces. neckline pressed nice and flat. We're going to flip it back so that the front and lining are wrong sides together and we're going to sew up the armhole seam. So that means we need to roll this ruffle in so that it isn't going to be in our way when we stitch. Then we line up It goes pretty much right up to the stitch line. make sure your ruffle isn't gonna is out of the way and you're not gonna catch it when you stitch. should be pulling the pins before I sew over them. And this is the part where you need to really make sure that you're not catching the ruffle as you sew along.
I'll sew the other side just like that. Now I've got both armhole seams sewn. I'm going to use my pinking shears again and trim the armhole. And I don't trim right up against the stitch line because I don't want to weaken the seam. I just want this to be able to allow the fabric to give a little bit more so that that curve is, can lay nice and flat. And once that is cut, then you can use the ruffle to pull. And then we have that seam fully enclosed and your ruffle is free. So I'll do that on the other side and then I'll go press all of this. So here's the bodice now that it's the armholes are finished and the neckline's finished. Now we're going to attach the straps. So I've taken the straps and ironed them so that they are the same width as this little section. So I ironed them in half and then ironed down about a little more than a quarter. I measured what this was and made sure that they would line up. I've also sewn the um, and I'm going to turn that out so that I have a nice corner. Let's see if I can poke that little end up. So now what you want to do is we're going to sew this strap onto the bodice. I'm basically going to wrap it around where the uh, shoulder of the bodice is. So, wrong side out. And then we're going to sew a half inch right along there. So I've sewn the strap on with a half inch seam allowance. I'm going to flip the strap back like that. And then we need to gather the strap ruffle to the correct length. Actually, I'm gonna move that back out of the way. So I wanna gather this down to about seven and a half inches. And then also gonna to have to make sure that it's evenly gathered across that length. Then I'm going to put the strap underneath it. The end is going to be encased inside the strap. I'm going to make sure that I'm still ending at about seven and a half inches. I'm going to pin that bit in place. And the gathers in all along the strap. 
and you want to make sure that you're pinning you're getting both sides pinned in because when you top stitch you'll catch both edges make sure that that's all getting encased. So I'll finish pinning this in and then we'll go sew it. Okay, I've got the strap ruffle all pinned in, making sure that I've caught both sides of the strap. And I have also pinned to the end of the strap. And now we're gonna top stitch. Actually, I'm gonna make sure that this little end gets tucked in. So that it doesn't show. Okay, we're gonna start our stitch line right at the same at the edge of the stitch line from the bib. And I've left myself tails so that I can bury them after I'm finished sewing. So with my presser foot up, I'm gonna put the needle exactly where I want to start. Drop my presser foot. And then so. some tails at the end. So now our strap ruffle is all sewn in place. And we've caught the back side so that it's all where it needs to be. Now I'm going to sew the gathering stitches on the front skirt. I've switched my thread to my white thread just because I've got a giant cone of that and there's no need to switch. I've also switched my um, stitch length to three and a half. Now I'm going to sew this first gathering stitch at three sixteenths of an inch. And I'm going to sew my second row of gathering stitches at a centimeter, which is just a hair shy of a half an inch. I already did this, but realized it didn't record it. So I mark the halfway point of the skirt by folding it in half and then just snipping a little triangle into the halfway point. I then 
unfold it and I start half an inch over because you have a half an inch seam allowance and I line that half inch point up with the triangle I just cut and fold that to get a quarter point. Make the same little notch cut there. Do the same thing on the other side. That way I have um, the ends and then three additional points along the skirt to give me a reference for where I should be gathering on the bodice. And then I also do the same for the bodice. So I marked, marked the halfway point and then the quarter points, leaving half an inch on the ends. Now I'm going to gather up the skirt by finding the bobbin threads from our gathering stitches. Then I just hold them in my left hand and pull the fabric along in my right hand. So I will gather this fabric up so that it's the same width as the front bodice. And then we'll pin it in place. So now I have the skirt all gathered up. I'm going to line up my notches with each other. So center to center. And then between the pins, I even out my gathers. Make sure that they're spaced evenly. Then I'll pin a couple more times. And one way to get your gathers to lay straight is to pinch with your thumb and forefinger and then with your opposite hand pull straight away and that kind of makes your gather sit nicer. So I'll do this all along the front of the bodice. Make sure that these edges line up and then we'll sew the skirt to the front bodice. So I have the front skirt pinned to the front bodice. I want to make sure that we're not catching the lining piece while we sew this. I've switched back to a two and a half stitch length and to my coral colored thread. Back stitch to lock my stitches in place my pin cushion so that I can take out pins as I go. And then just like with the bib ruffle, I'm going to go along between each set of pins and straighten out my um, gathers before I sew over them. so that the skirt goes up into the uh, bodice area. Now I have my back skirt piece. I've ironed down a quarter of an inch and then three quarters of an inch, and this is going to create the casing for the elastic that goes through the back skirt. I'm going to drop my foot down and so line up 
at my the edge of my casing with the edge of my presser foot. Now I've cut a piece of half inch elastic to the length specified by the pattern. It's going to vary based on the size. And I am going to find an opening of this casing, insert. I put a safety pin on it to give me something to be able to pull through. And to start with, I only want to pull it in until it's just to the edge of the fabric. Now I'm going to stop and sew that in place. rest of the way through. When I get to the end, take the safety pin off and then just pull it through so it's just at the edge of the fabric. And then I'll tack it in place. even up the fabric along the length of the elastic. Now we're gonna sew the two sections of the skirt together. So we want, I'm gonna do a French seam along this, these seams. So I want wrong sides facing to start. And I'm starting with the elastic edge right at the seam where the front and back bodice, or front and bodice lining meet at the armhole. And I've pinned along. If you have any extra length on either one of the skirts, you want to have that length be at the bottom and it'll get taken care of when we hem the skirt. Also, so the way that this dress works, the front bodice comes down further and then the back skirt goes all the way up to the top. And so we only need to French seam um, just past where the front skirt attaches to the front bodice because the rest will be covered by the lining. I'm going to start about an inch above there and do a quarter of an inch seam around. trim the seam allowance by half an inch, not half an inch, I'm going to take half the seam allowance, so about an eighth of an inch. 
and then I'll iron this seam open and then we'll sew the final seam. All right, I've got the first half of that French seam done. I've ironed it open so that we're now uh, right sides facing on the skirt pieces. I've got the elastic back skirt right here. It's going to line up with the seam where the front and lining main pieces meet, or front bodice pieces meet. And then the lining piece is going to wrap to the back of the skirt. Pin that in place. And then it's going to come down and it'll be a quarter of an inch out from where the two skirt pieces meet. And then we're going to fold this, the lining piece up half an inch so that it'll just cover, when we pull it back around the correct way, it'll cover, just come down to where the stitches are on the skirt. And I'm gonna pin that in place. And then here we're gonna be taking half an inch. When we get down to the skirt, it'll be a quarter of an inch seam. You wanna make sure that this elastic is really firmly secured in, so I'm back stitching at the top and bottom of the elastic. quarter of an inch over from the edge of the lining piece and then and then we'll gather cotton there. I'm gonna back stitch right here as well. And then for the rest of the seam it'll all be at a quarter of an inch. That's what it looks like when we finish the seam when we turn the lining back to the front the skirt panel looks like this and then we'll be able to pin the lining in place and top stitch it down so i will do the same thing to the other side and then we'll attach the lining to the skirt and main bodice Okay, now we have both skirt side seams done and you can see when it's flipped out that you have a nice finished seam here and our nice French seam there. So now we're just going to attach the lining to the main bodice, kind of like to start in the center. And I fold up the lining so that it's just at the length of the, so it just covers the stitches from where we attach the skirt to the main bodice. And then I pin it in place. You just wanna make sure that you're pulling it tight enough that it's not going to show that the lining's not going to show through from the front, but not too taut that you're going to cause the front 
or the main bodice to pucker. So I'll go all the way along and pin this in place and then we will top stitch from the front. Okay, I've got my bodice lining, lining pinned in all the way across. I pinned it about every inch, inch and a half. You really wanna make sure that you have the bodice lining nice and secure and in place because we're going to top stitch from the right side of the dress. I've also turned the skirt inside out so that this piece isn't underneath the bodice while I'm trying to stitch so I don't accidentally catch it. I've got thread tails here so that I can bury them after I make this stitch. And I'm going to start right at the seam line where the bodice meets the skirt, the back skirt. And then I'm going to just, I've lined up the bodice edge with the edge of my presser foot. So that's gonna give me an eighth inch stitch line. And I'm just slowly go up stitch this in place. You want to stop right at the seam where the back skirt meets the bodice. Leave yourself tails so that you can bury them. Now the lining is all stitched in place. Now we're going to work on hemming the skirt. I have a slight discrepancy between the front and back skirt, probably about a quarter of an inch. And the way that I'm going to deal with that is that I'm just going to fold the front down a little bit more than the back. So about half an inch for the front skirt and just a quarter of an inch for the back skirt. And then I'll fold up another half inch for both. I'll do this all the way around the skirt and then we'll meet at the sewing machine to finish the hem. So I have the hem all ironed into place and now I'm just gonna sew it in. And just like with the bodice, I'm going to line the left side of my presser foot up with the left edge of this uh, hem and just sew all the way around. Go slow over the side seams, they're kind of thick. thing we have to do to finish this dress is to add buttons, buttonholes to the straps and one button to the center back of the dress. So I'm going to measure down from the end of the ruffle an inch and then um, centered on the width of the strap. 
and then I'm going to, so this dress has adjustable straps. So I'm gonna go every inch and do three buttonholes on each strap. So I'll do the same markings for the other one and then we'll make buttonholes. So now we're gonna make our buttonholes. I've got my buttonhole put, set up on my sh machine. I've run a couple of test buttonholes to make sure the tension and size and everything is good. And I've lined up the mark that I made with this little center line on my buttonhole foot. And I'm gonna hit start. threads I just move down to my next mark make sure everything's lined up I make sure my fabric is parallel to the side of the foot and then I hit start again do this for the remaining four buttonholes. So I like to add a fray check to my buttonholes after I've made them. This just keeps them from fraying when I cut them open. So I'll add it to both sides. and it'll dry clear. You won't be able to see it there. So I will let that dry, and while that's drying, I'll attach the button to the back. So I'm gonna find the back center, and I happen to have put my tags there, so it's easy for me to find, but find the back center of the dress. I'm going to, I've got a needle with a thread that's doubled up and knotted. I'm going to bury that knot. Some tails in my fabric. And make a little cross. This is for a four hole button. I make a little cross on my fabric where the button's going to go. And then slide my button on. And I pull it a little bit tight, but not, I want to create a little shank in the back so that there's room for the straps to sit on this button. I cross my threads three times just for Security, I've never had an issue with a button coming off, so that's just my, I like to do it. And once I do that, I wrap the thread around the back of the threads a few times, put my needle through wrap the needle a couple times and that'll create a little knot. Pull through and then I bury my threads again. 
clip that off. Okay, I've cut open my buttonholes and now I'm going to take them and put one over the button. Take the opposite side. And put it over the button. And the dress is finished. So there's the back and the front and I'll insert some pictures and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial.